This is Boston Lanka News, bringing you news, views and entertainment from Boston and USA. I'm Bayoni Dima. Manjula Disanayaka is the founder of Educate Lanka, a non-profit social venture that invests in the education of promising future leaders from underprivileged backgrounds. Born and raised in Sri Lanka, Manjula earned his bachelor's in finance from the University of Maryland. After a career in finance, he completed a master's in international development and social entrepreneurship from the Fletcher School at Tufts University before becoming a social entrepreneur. He also worked at the International Finance Corporation at the World Bank. His efforts and expertise has been recognized by the UN, US Department of State, USAID, and Clinton Global Initiative. Manjula joins with us from Washington, D.C. Manjula, recently you were named as one of the under 33 foreign policy influencers. Um, now, what is your vision of foreign policy in the 21st century? Thanks, Varani. Thanks for the opportunity and uh, mentioning about the recognition. Uh, I, I think uh, my vision for foreign policy is twofold. One is about shared future. Um, we, are, we live in a world that is more global than ever before, and we are more connected and shared, uh, uh, more connected than ever before as well, through whether it's through technology, uh, through the internet, uh, travel, trade, or business, uh, which means that we are more interdependent than independent than uh, our previous generations. So uh, this, I think, uh, leads into uh, more from self-interest and self-values to a shared future and shared vision, shared values and shared, shared interest. Uh, and secondly, I think uh, we need to think of foreign policy uh, and uh, in, in a way that moving away from hard power or military power to soft power. In today's society, we, uh, with whether it's be aid, education, trade, music or cultural exchanges, there are a lot of opportunities to influence each other through soft power. A lot of countries uh, have uh, great innovations, uh, great uh, added value to be shared with other countries. And I think these type of uh, uh, these type of power is more valuable and more effective than military and hard power. So those two are the uh, changes that I see. Uh, going forward and our generation especially uh, should be focusing on going forward. Uh, some says that uh, Sri Lanka needs to think carefully and have a new insights about the foreign policy for the 21st century given many changing realities in the world. Do you have any thoughts about the foreign policy for Sri Lanka? I think uh, just you know just as in any other country, uh, Sri Lanka has faced a lot of other challenges in the past and just come out of a, a major war and gotten a lot of world attention. Uh, so a lot of what, what I mentioned in my previous answer of shared vision, shared future, uh, and moving to more of soft power and leading by example applies to Sri Lanka as well. Um, you know, today we are presented with a huge opportunity for Sri Lanka after the war has ended. Uh, the world is paying attention to us and we have uh, in front of us uh, a huge opportunity to set an example uh, uh, and, and really lead our way uh, through foreign policy or, and domestic policy as well. Uh, for Sri Lanka specifically, I think uh, the term foreign policy begins at home, applies very well, uh, especially uh, at the current context. Uh, we have the perfect opportunity to show the world that uh, we are an example, a country that uh, multi-religious uh, and multi-ethnicities, uh, ethnic, ethnic groups can coexist. And uh, here we are today looking at this opportunity and if we don't take advantage of that, uh, we are going to, um, it's, it's a huge missed opportunity, I think. Um, so uh, again, and also, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, leading with soft power, Sri Lanka has a lot of soft power to offer, I would say. Uh, whether it's to, through tourism, uh, whether it's through trade, uh, the, the historical cultural uh, aspects, music, 
uh, even the education system, uh, if done correctly, uh, we have a lot of opportunities to show the rest of the world how uh, how, how how policies should be directed uh, to lasting peace and sustainable development. Uh, we as Sri Lankans should focus in, for in for for the long term, uh, move away from the short term goals and um, development and uh, really think about the sustainable peace and development. Uh, without that long-term vision, I think uh, we'll face uh, more, more challenges or new challenges in the, in the, in the future. Uh, but, uh, you know, there are many uh, initiatives and uh, action has taken, uh, you know, have been taken place back home. And I think uh, we need to build up on those and really deliver the results and set an example. Uh, Manjula, uh, just imagine uh, you have become the foreign minister in Sri Lanka. How do you do things differently to navigate Sri Lanka's relations with USA, China, India, and the rest of the world? <laughs> uh, that's a scary thought, uh, but um, you know, hypothetically speaking, uh, you know, it's it, it's as you said, it's it's a very difficult uh, path to navigate and uh, and uh, goals to achieve, especially. Uh, Sri Lankan context is very complicated. We have uh, uh, multi-religions, uh, multi-ethnicities that exist in Sri Lanka, and uh, it, to to uh, to uh, move forward, uh, we need a balanced approach. And if I were to just uh, give a very short answer, I would say uh, we should move away from the defensive approaches and really. Um, set examples by delivering and, and basically delivering uh, what, what, what we say uh, in action. And I think that that is what the world is looking for uh, from us. Uh, as I said previously, we have a huge opportunity in front of us uh, to set, really set an example to the world uh, that we have defeated terrorism uh, and uh, we can achieve lasting peace and sustainability and uh, uh, growth and uh, uh, very thought out uh, development um, given the resources uh, uh, that, that the country has. And uh, as you said, uh, you know, managing the allies and uh, countries, uh, Sri Lanka, um, you know, in general has the opportunity to have good relationships, uh, relations with uh, uh, both the East and the West. And I don't think we need to choose sides in this. And uh, uh, there should be clear vision and clear agendas that uh, serve the interest of other countries and keeping um, keep, keep keeping uh, a shared uh, values and shared interest in mind uh, without uh, really focusing on our own self interest and self values because the future is going to be shared the future is going to be more global than even today so we need to look outside of our borders and really think of our policies uh, that are going to affect uh, 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 those trends in the future. Uh, you spoke at the Clinton Global Initiative University in 2013. Could you tell us what you shared with your audience? Well, well uh, that was uh, last year, and uh, as a officially recognized organization, uh, Educate Lanka as a uh, youth organization at the Clinton Global Initiative University. Uh, I was invited to speak about uh, fundraising and basically how to take an idea or a vision uh, to the market and make it a reality. Uh, Clinton Global Initiative University is, a, um, is, a, is an organization that brings together young leaders uh, or young um, uh, students uh, who are committed to make a difference in the world, who are committed to finding solutions to a lot of global problems. Um, and they bring them every year and they bring uh, guest speakers, uh, conduct workshops, and really provide the resources and tools that are necessary for them to uh, make those ideas into action. So uh, my opportunity was to speak to the group, uh, uh, hundreds of students, about uh, giving examples of how uh, what Eduke and Lanka's journey has been, and how we um, we manage it uh, uh, through the startup phase, and uh, specific examples of fundraising, and uh, basically bootstrapping our way into the organization today. Uh, so it was a great uh, great opportunity. Um, 
and I uh, and, and a great way to uh, share our, our experience with, uh, with with the rest of the students. Earlier this year, you were named one of the American Express Emerging Innovators as well as a top 10 social innovators by Ignite, Good and Huffington Post. Now, what is the Ignite movement? So, uh, those two are different uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, recognitions and awards. Uh, the American Express uh, in partnership with Ashoka uh, uh, and then uh, Ignite movement, which is backed by Huffington Post, uh, they, they were both about social innovations and social entrepreneurship. And uh, specifically speaking about Ignite Good movement, as you said, it's, it, it is a special uh, movement. It's, it's a special organization that uh, brought together 10 uh, young social entrepreneurs uh, and social innova innovators uh, into, uh, into, in, into, into a week-long workshop and uh, really, uh, uh, the the main theme was to first figure out our own stories, individual stories of each of the ten uh, social entrepreneurs, and then discuss how those stories relate and uh, resonate with uh, everyone else's. Um, we could be working on addressing different issues from education to healthcare to entrepreneurship, uh, but or, or to farming. But at the end of the day. Uh, going back, the motivation behind starting our own initiatives uh, were pretty similar. Uh, so it, it was it was a great occasion for us to meet each other, uh, discuss our stories, and see how we all have this with this shared vision for the future of making the world, uh, you know, making a difference in the world, uh, addressing uh, it could be broader challenges, it could be very specific challenges. Uh, such as serving uh, farmers in Guatemala or serving students in Sri Lanka. Uh, so this is uh, the, just the beginning and uh, we are hoping to keep uh, reconnecting with, with each other as a community and basically spread that uh, message to uh, and identify other millennials who are doing uh, great things in their own communities. And uh, so we can come together as a generation uh, and address some of the pressing problems in our society. What are the most uh, common challenges uh, your generation uh, faces in transforming the world? Yeah, as a as a generation, you know, as Generation Y or uh, millennials, uh, we've been blamed for a lot of uh, societal problems today. Um, it could be we are inheriting some of the problems from other generations, uh, and uh, we are living in a different uh, world than uh, you know if, what it was 20 years ago. Um, with regard to transforming, I, I don't think our generation will actually be able to transform the world. And I don't think actually it is necessary for us to uh, transform the world. But what I think is that uh, our generation faces, faces new challenges, uh, whether, it is, whether they are harder or easier than the challenges uh, from previous generation, uh, our challenges are different and new. So, the biggest challenge that our generation face now is to uh, find new solutions. Uh, these new challenges and diff uh, challenges need fresh thinking and fresh ideas and fresh uh, solutions. And that is, I think, uh, the biggest challenge uh, that we have in our hand. Uh, because the solutions that uh, to some of the problems that have been in the past might not be uh, might not work in today's world. Uh, for example, unlike in the past, uh, we are faced with different problems, such as uh, the threat of terrorism is uh, increasingly higher now. Uh, there are things called cybersecurity threats that didn't exist 20 years ago, and different form, even different forms of marginalization and poverty and, uh, than previous generations. So all of these problems need, need new ideas and new solutions. Um, so our fundamental core values also should adapt to uh, prepare us for these challenges, uh, meaning that education should prepare uh, the new generation uh, to address these challenges, uh, meaning the media that we listen to, the social values that we are instilled in uh, and, uh, should prepare us for these challenges. Uh, if not, uh, we are going to uh, 
uh, it is going to be extremely difficult uh, if we don't adapt uh, our cultures and uh, develop uh, uh, to understand each other, uh, build empathy, and uh, look at the world in a global perspective. Uh, it is going to be extremely difficult. Uh, so, so you think uh, your generation uh, living in Sri Lanka is capable to face the challenges and overcome the obstacles? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, uh, I think uh, Sri Lankans truly have the potential to set examples in this world. Uh, but I think the key is education. Without proper access to education, uh, uh, they won't have the opportunities. Uh, to face, you know, to add, to to find solutions to address those challenges. If our education system doesn't prepare themselves, they uh, prepare our new generations and students uh, to face these challenges, then we are going to be in a, uh, in deeper trouble in the future. Uh, for me, education has two main components. One is access, uh, meaning fully comprehensive access to every child and every student who deserves that chance should be should should uh, be given uh, the the chance to pursue the education they deserve uh, and secondly the quality uh, if the education that we are providing in schools um, doesn't really <coughs> uh, deliver uh, the competencies that are required by the students to meet the demands of the global world uh, we are not we are, we are failing uh, for example, a curriculum set uh, 30, 40 years ago uh, doesn't necessarily apply today. And if you're not preparing students with the skills that they need to um, uh, be employed, um, then we are facing with unemployment or underemployment. So we need to really uh, think deeply about these issues and uh, not even moving f uh, away from the skills and the uh, quality of education. We need to think about uh, in today's world uh, we need to instill the global perspectives into our uh, students. We need to prepare our students to look outside of the borders of Sri Lanka and look at the problems uh, at a glo global level because the problems and challenges they are going to face in the future are not going to be just unique to Sri Lanka. Those are going to be global challenges and if they are not ready for that, uh, we are going uh, we are going to be a step behind uh, than everyone else. Uh, you have been a uh, part of the former Secretary of State, um, Hillary Clinton's Global Diaspora Forum. Let's talk about the Sri Lankan diaspora. This term is somewhat uh, misunderstood in the Sri Lankan context. Uh, could you give your interpretation of Sri Lanka diaspora? Yeah, I think uh, that term has a, a lot of meanings and a lot of interpretations that have, have been given uh, and easily confused as well. Um, I think technically the word diaspora means uh, people who live outside of their countries of origin or, or ancestry, uh, but uh, still connected and still participate in uh, uh, things back home. Uh, these all, these include both immigrants and uh, and descendants. Um, and uh, and I, I specifically speaking about Sri Lankan diaspora, I think uh, you know where uh, over two million of us uh, living outside. Uh, and uh, unlike uh, or like other diaspora communities, the Sri Lankans are uh, the Sri Lankan diaspora is a very active group. Uh, we are very concerned about uh, things back home. We care deeply about things back home, um, and uh, so I think Sri Lankan diaspora is going to be a key component in uh, a lot of uh, a lot of these things that we discussed, from foreign policy to domestic policy to uh, development and peace and sustainability, all of that, I think the Sri Lankan diaspora has a, a huge role to play. The mission of the Educate Lanka is invest in the education of promising future leaders from underprivileged backgrounds. Any success stories you may share with us? Uh, yes, of course. Um, there are actually a number of success stories that I can mention over the even the short, uh, you know, uh, period of oh, last five years, we've uh, now have uh, over 50 graduates uh, who who who've go, gone into become uh, professionals in their own fields. Uh, uh, just to give a few examples, if I may, um, 
could recall a student, uh, the first student from uh, the east, co uh, east, eastern province of Sri Lanka, uh, was a uh, just became a doctor. He was the first in the family to get an education and we funded him for over four years throughout his medical school uh, in the Eastern University and he just became a doctor and I think that was uh, one of the uh, happiest uh, stories that uh, uh, that we, we are proud to um, recall. Uh, and there are, uh, there's a student in uh, Gampola, uh, Kandy district, uh, who's, uh, who's uh, only in the eighth grade, we've been funding him for the last four years and uh, after the fifth grade scholarship exam, he was uh, selected to go to attend a better school, but he didn't have uh, means to afford transportation. So, with our help uh, of our Educate Lanka scholarship, uh, he was attend uh, he was able to attend the better school, and subsequently, he ended up winning two international mathematics prizes for Sri Lanka. He was one, only uh, one of the two uh, students from the entire country uh, to win. A medal, uh, and one of those medals was a gold medal. Uh, one was in Indonesia, and one was in Nepal. Um, and he's only uh, at, at grade nine uh, currently. Um, uh, similarly, in Baunia, uh, there's uh, after 20 years of displacement, there's uh, uh, we have a student uh, who's who's the first girl, girl or the first person in that family to be educated. Uh, she's uh, uh, she's able to attend and. Uh, uh, afford all the educational expenses through Educate Lanka scholarships. Uh, similarly, we have uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, we have a group of students from Sabargamu University uh, who have built a uh, mobile app that provides agricultural solutions to the farmers. Um, uh, and there's another student from Ampar who's built a robot actually from his village and ended up getting a job at Brandix. So there are many, many of these stories, and we have lawyers doctors, engineers, architects who graduated um, and, and it's really rewarding to see that uh, these uh, students uh, with potential from marginalized backgrounds and marginalized communities, we were able to identify them and we were able to invest in their future and now they're actually uh, going into the society with, uh, with better opportunities and uh, I'm sure uh, you know, most of them have already participated back into the program, so uh, they're going to contribute back uh, to many other students. And uh, and 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 these are these are these are few of the stories that uh, you know we are very proud of. And uh, we are just at the beginning, so I'm sure there are, there'll be a lot more stories uh, similar to this that we can share in the future. That concludes our news edition. We meet you again with another news edition of news views and entertainment from Boston and USA. Till then, goodbye. Adarniya Nayagara <laughs>